And you want to know about Monticelli? Monticelli. Okay. There you go, guys. Oh, well. Okay, <laughs> so I'm uh, Dale Hendricks, and uh, I guess uh, I guess Meticello is my fault. And then uh, this is uh, Mariano Peck, and he's the uh, chief evangelist for Meticello, and actually is writing the chapter on Meticello in the uh, Pharaoh by Example Two book. So um, anyway, we're going to talk about Meticello today, and uh, it's probably a good thing that our original scheduled uh, time got moved out there because the ink is still wet on this thing. Mariano showed up yesterday. <laughs> he wrote, well, no, we figured out what we wanted to talk about last night and finished the last slide, what, about 15 minutes ago? <laughs> so uh, we'll, see, we'll see how it goes. And this is a French keyboard with the uh, Spanish mapping and a Mac that I've never used before. <laughs> I'm not doing many of the demos. Okay. All right, so the title of the talk is Everything You Wanted to Know About Meticello, But We're Afraid to Ask. And... Um, we're not going to cover everything today, so um, you, you have to be not afraid to ask some questions a little bit. Um, so what is Meticello? Uh, Meticello is a package management system for Monticello. Um, it was developed to solve a particular set of problems that I was running into, running glass and trying to port applications from Faro, Squeak to Gemstone, mainly Seaside, but it's not just Seaside, it's other things. And, um, the lack of a package management system was getting to be a bigger and bigger problem, and finally I said, okay, I don't see anything out there that really works. We'll do Meticello. Um, basically, in the, in the, uh, uh, um, the model for, for Meticello is that there's a configuration file per project. So oh, I guess I'm the one that, that does this. Um, and what we will do is basically go through, I'll give you an overview of what, what the configuration file is, give people an idea of just how this stuff works, and um, then Mariano will go in and essentially run through a tutorial for you. And um, then we'll do a little bit of futures and be done. Anyway, um, as you can see, the, the planning. Uh, okay, so the configuration file defines, a, uh, defines project versions. All right, so, so a Seaside project has a configuration of Seaside. XML has a configuration of XML, et cetera, et cetera. And there's a number of versions that can be defined within that configuration file. Um, and a version within a configuration 
is a list of Monticello files, the MCZ files, the list of other projects that are used, and um, a specification of the dependencies. And that's, and that's it. And, you know, this is, the, this is the basic stuff that goes that a year ago on the emailing list when someone said, how do I load project such and so? And the answer was, load this MCZ file. And they, the next question was, it depends on such and so. How do I get that? Well, load this MCZ file, and on and on and on. And then three weeks later, the same set of questions came up. So anyway, that's, these, this is the information you need. Um, and I guess I, I, I covered a little bit of the why Meticello. But um, yeah, I just covered the why Meticello. Sorry about that. Um, but the answer is, Meticello is for the users of a project, not the developers. All right. So developers can sit here and say, hey, I'm happy. I've got my needs all taken care of. I develop my project. I do update latest. Off I go. But that's not who you're thinking about when you think about your Meticello configuration or do I need a Meticello configuration. Someone expects to use your project. You are the one that knows what's needed, why it's needed, and what the configuration is. So you're the one that should be specifying what's in the project and how a user should load it and use it. And that's, that's what we're aiming at here. So Mariano here, I think that's the next slide, right? Yes. Um, so what we'll do is tell you, all right, give you an introduction to what would you do with a fairly simple project we're going to do for Greece, um, the step-by-step -step process of building a configuration, <coughs> and cover most of, the, most of the items that you need to know to build, you know, all, all, any configuration. So, Mariano? Hello. Hello. Uh, it's okay, the volume? A little louder. This is okay. Okay. Um, as Dale said, my name is Mariana Martinez Peck. Uh, my native language is my native language is not English. So if something is missing or you don't understand, please ask Dale. <laughs> if you have further question about Metacello, ask Dale. Uh, so this, this picture is from Barcelona. It's for the City Lab people, be proud that it's a nice picture. So I will uh, start with a tutorial, and the tutorial starts with very basic stuff with, from Metacello, but for those people that already know something about Metacello, uh, you still will learn something because there are certain things that they are not basic, and you will learn from it. So um, to start with an example, we thought that maybe we could take an, uh, and invent a, an example from scratch, but that didn't make sense because we already have written a lot of configuration that already uh, use all the all of most all of the metachello functionalities so we are, we are going to use the grease example for those who do, do not know grease is a, a portable layer or a layer or a framework to help you to write the more portable code in a small talk so the configuration it's a bit tricky and it has all of the features so we will, we will uh, start for that. So suppose that you want to load Greece in your image. You will need to uh, start to open the repository to know which packages to need to load, which order, the dependencies, which version, etc. So the idea is that we start to define the stable versions. So the first thing is to create what they said, the configuration file. In uh, those who know Java, it's like maybe something like a POM XML, for example, or something where you define all the metadata and all the information. That will be, in our case, a class. There is a convention where you, you should name your class, like configuration of, and the name of your project. It's not mandatory, it's just uh, something that Metachilo recommends. So for this, we're going to start creating, creating a new class. I'm going to start with. Uh, Okay, if you, you can start this, the class from scratch or Metachilo provides you a template. Because as we will see, the, the configuration that you will, you will need has certain behavior. So for ex that's why um, Metachilo provides you this template, Metachilo config template class. Well, usually what you have to do is to, to copy and put the name you want, for example, configuration of uh, Greece, uh, 
into one to save something. So you create that class, then you can browse it. So for I can make I can browse it where I have. And the point that I have a large image and wait a second. Wait a second because the resolution is maybe it's better to open the image. Huh? Yeah, thanks, Lucas. So, if you see now the class that we copied from the other one, it has some behavior. If you see in the, in the class side, had some methods, and also in the instance, in the instance side, has an instance variable called project and some other stuff that we will explain later. But for the moment, we can start with this class that we just create, and here we will start to put all the versions of our project. So, for example, I can start to come here and write all the code. In order to not to lose very uh, a lot of time, we already create a, a template that we can use so that not to, to write everything by hand. So I, cr I have another class that I have already created. And um, so, hmm. um, I call it Configuration of Grease issue. So we will work all the tutorial with, with this class. So what is the first thing that you have to do? You, can, you have to create a version method. A, a version method is just a normal method where you have to, you, you receive a specification by parameter, but you, you, you don't need to care about that for the moment. And you define a version. So for example, in Greece, I can say, okay, this is Greece 0.1 for example, and I write and I implement the, the version 0.1. I can put the name as I want for the method. What is important is this pragma definition. In this pragma definition, I, I, I put the version 0.1, and that is the version that w the user will use to, down to download this project. And then we will import the baseline that we will explain later this. So as you can see, what basically I say is that for common, this means for all the uh, small talk dialects, because uh, Metacello w uh, works in all the dial dialects that support Monticello, so you work in Squeak, Faro, Shemstone. And what I said is, is for common, for all of the dialects, for this version, I can specify this information. For example, I can set the blessing. The blessing can be release, uh, it can be beta, uh, development, release candidate one, alpha, or whatever kind of blessing that you want. And then you have a description where you can give description of this version. Sometimes you think this is not important, but I it's interesting to see, okay, in, in Greece 2.1, what did they change? W what they fix? So the point is to, to put description here. The next one is the author who creates this version and the timestamp when this uh, version was created. And when th that is done, you have to specify the project that you, you want to load. In this case, we will start with uh, Greece core and the Greece test core. The only thing that I will say in this version is the versions of the packages. So in this case, the only thing I say is I say it's Greece core. Okay, I want the version GF45. For Greece test core, I want the version Greece test core Lucas Wrangley 59. And that's all you need to give all the information you need to give to a, a, a version method, just versions. But there are a structural information that you all also have to manage. For example, the dependencies between packages. They usually, they don't change so frequently, for example. So if you have to put all the stru structural information in the versions, you end up with a lot of duplication because Maybe now I do another version, but the dependencies remain the same because the structural behavior do, does not change as frequently as the versions. So for that, we have a specific uh, Metacello version that are called baseline. And if we see the baseline, in this case, this version imports this, ba this baseline. So in the same class, we will see that we have a, a baseline method. and what I see is 
I define the again the version in, in, in this time it's called zero, zero dot 0.1 baseline and for common this means for all the small dialects I do the same I said the blessing that most of the cases in baseline the blessing is baseline uh, and I specified the repository for the repository is is not likely to be changed amongst the different versions so it's like static information so all that kind of things are going to be put in the baseline methods. So I'm saying that Greece would be found in the Seaside 3.0 repository. I don't know why it does, maybe it can have another, its own repository in the future. And at that moment, we can create another baseline where it puts the new repository. So here, the simplest baseline possible, we say that we, we, de we define the packages Greece core and the package grid test score. But for the grid test score, we say that that package requires grid score. This means that grid score is a dependency of uh, grid test score. So it means that grid score will be loaded probably first than grid score. Uh, or at least it will be loaded for sure. For sure, grid score will be loaded. Uh, so th this is using the requ requires message is that we can uh, specify the dependencies. Of course, as you can see here, I, I, I'm using an array. So a package can de depend on uh, several packages. So for example, the score may depend on grid score and maybe in another other package. So it's an, it's an array. Um, so th this is basically for, for this simple example, you can load grid and it will load both packages with the version that I said. And I will make sure that if I don't load this, it will load also grid score. And now, suppose I have a new, uh, I, I have a fixes or whatever. I just can, here, I can do a second version and just change, okay, this is our second release or whatever you want. You can change the blessing, the time, and say, okay, now I use the, this version, and maybe here I came back because, I don't know, I break something, so I get this five, for example. And this is the only thing that you need to change because you are still using the same baseline because it didn't change. You didn't change the, the dependencies. You didn't change the repository. So it's easy to create new versions. So, um, if we came back to the slide, I want to see that I said all that I wanted to say, and did you see? Yes, all tests green. So let's go to the second step of the of the tutorial. Uh, is it clear? If you have questions, we prefer to ask you right now because some, sometimes it's basic question, and if you don't understand, you get lost. So if you have question, raise your hand, and and we will try to answer. So now we write a second baseline, which, was, which is called zero, zero dot 0.2. And it's almost the same. Ah, sorry, I am the version. Thanks. So here I'm in the baseline. And you, you can see it's almost the same baseline. But the only thing that I add is I added four Faro and for Shemstone. So for the common dialects, I set the same baseline, I set the same repository, I said I, I want the grid score package, I want the grid test score package that requires the grid score and everything. But then for Faro only, for example, I also download the package Greece Faro Core. That fa Greece Faro Core is a, a specific package from Greece that has to be loaded only on Faro. So we put here, uh, this package here, and it depends on Greece core, okay? And then we do the same for Shemstone, because Greece, as a, as a, as a, it, it is a um, portable layer, it requires platform-specific packages. I mean, it, it requires a package per di dialect. So in this case, for example, we also add for Shemstone, and in this case, we, all, we load this package for Shemstone, and again, it, it depends on Greece. 
So with this, with using this different spec for do, you can specify different things for different dialects. You can, uh, as we are going to see later, you can change or decide almost everything that you want. Put one package or not put one package or to load this or not to load this. Almost all you can do, it can be done for only one of the dialects or two, all of them. Question. If uh, if you ask something that we will explain later, we will just say you that we will explain later. Oh. Are the symbols defined anywhere? Sorry? Are those symbols defined anywhere, like gemstone and pharaoh and... Mm, as far as I know, <laughs> don't correct me if I'm wrong, it's uh, in the Metacello code. Uh, it's yeah, there's a... There's basically a, a basic set, common, gemstone. Uh, there's actually, it goes common, uh, squeak common, which is common code between squeak and pharaoh. Pharaoh, squeak. And then for gemstone, in addition to gemstone, there's a gemstone 2.x, a gemstone 2.3.x. But this is, basically this information, Metacello itself has a platform-specific core uh, 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 packages. And in those platform-specific packages, the list of, we call them attributes, can be defined on a platform by platform basis. So the common set is common. Everything else is platform specific at this, at this point. Uh, yes? Uh, maybe I uh, missed the explanation, but uh, is there uh, any real reason that there sh should be a primitive uh, notification? A primitive where? Uh, the first line is primitive. Ah, so no, it, uh, uh, no, that's not a primitive. It's, it's called pragma. And they are kind of uh, annotations for Faro and I think it's Quick and Shemson also. It's kind of metadata that you can yeah. give to the metadata. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make the comment. Um, basically, when you're looking at the configuration of that we're building right now, you really, you know, earlier in the presentation I said configuration file because this, that's really what we have here is a configuration file. XML is a horrible format to write in and somebody would need a tool to do XML. And if you actually dig into this, this format that we're, that we're showing here, this all could be represented in XML. In fact, in earlier versions, I used structured files for this, or structured arrays, all right? But I was the only one that could read it. So, you know, it turns out that using a small talk method that is stylized, and that's what's going on here, these spec messages and everything else are stylized to be, cheap, to be cheaper and easier to use than an XML format, and we use the browser as our tool for development. So, so pragmas have the um, the ability to, um, or the, uh, I guess yeah, the ability yeah, the ability to sit down and you can ask a class for the list of methods that have pragmas of certain um, uh, pattern, and then you'll notice then for each version, version one, version two. There's a, uh, when you uh, expand our XML, we actually do it programmatically, and we grab each of the version, uh, imp uh, each of the, the pragmas, and mash everything together and turn it into a, a, an object model. So, so that's what the pragmas are used for. And so there's nobody that actually sends any of these messages, and nobody has to write a sender of it. We just go directly and grab the pragmas and do work. So. Okay. So coming back to our example, now we create a new baseline. It's called uh, 0 0.3. And the only difference with the second one is that we add for Faro not only the, that Gris Faro core de depends on Gris core, but also that the Gris test Faro core depends on Gris test core. It's logical. And the same you do this, you can add all the packages and all the dependencies that you want. For example, in Shemstone, we do the same. Shemstone, there are Shem there are tests for Shemstone. So, but for example, suppose that Shemstone didn't have tests, I can just do this and it will work anyway. So you put platform specific there for each dialect. Yes? Oh, that's a good question. That's a good question. Um, I've got a circular dependency um, catcher. <laughs> 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 and, uh, well, and it, it it's 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 covered. Um, actually, there are there are 
weird intra project dependencies that can go off into infinite loops, and one of those was just recently fixed in one of the recent versions of Meticello. So, uh, you know, there's going to be a validator that looks for that stuff. Uh, another similar problem, but maybe we are going too fast, but sometimes there are conflicts also because you need the ec uh, version 2 of a, uh, a package. Um, there you have you require another package that requires the other package but with another version. So which one do you take? Mine or the one that? That's covered. Yeah, yeah, that's covered. And it reminds the first one in the... Okay, but you see there are kind of this problem. So as you see, we create a new baseline. When just you can put in this, in this for do, you can put all that you want for, for a specific dialect. Now, the last thing that uh, we need to clarify here for the following example, we're lo loading Greece, uh, in Greece uh, because of its own implementation, it requires that the order of the packages are first, the Greece, uh, Greece Faro core, Sorry, Greece core first, then Greece Faro core, and finally test. See, this is because of uh, class side initialize that calls another thing. It doesn't matter for for us. What this matter is that we want to get that order. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I understand what you said, but then I uh, was just wondering why the platform specific thing depends on the the, gener the more common thing. The, the oh, um, okay. So there's actually going to be two dependencies. Oh, sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> Both of us like to talk. We, yeah. <laughs> I'm too loud. <laughs> um, so, so the dependency is that Greece core does have to be loaded before the platform specific core, but Another, any package that depends on Greece core has to load after Greece Faro core. You have core, Faro core, everything else. So binding those two together is, is the problem that, that we're setting up to solve here. So. Uh, yeah, initially I just was wondering uh, if you have a package Greece gemstone core which depends on Greece core. Who does depend on Greece gemstone core then? Now, it, oh, well, only people in the gemstone package should, or subsets, uh, subsets of gemstone, all right? I mean, you have platforms, right? And you have gemstone. Version 2.x may have something special. It may be that gemstone core is different for 2.1 than for 2.2 in gemstone, and a, distinction, a separate package needs to, to come in. And if, all right, there are load order dependencies you know, that, that um, gemstone core would have to be loaded before gemstone core for 2.x, then you'd need a requires on the core, gemstone core. If you don't, then you don't need to. So you specify the things where loading is important and where, uh, where, where the requirements exist. And if, they, if, there is, if you don't care, then it will load the, or, the default order is the order of the packages in the configuration. So, you know, so did that... Did that did that address it? Yeah, my summary would be then that you, but if by default you only load Greece core, and you have a special dependency, then you'd have an external dependency on Greece gemstone core. Right, right, okay, right. So each totally package sense. to package kind of dependency, okay. you know, you've, you've only got the one graph, right, or the one, the one node, and that's it, okay? So if it's linked, then, it, then it's linked node to node to node, or linked to the earlier node, but, but the reference is where the dependency resides. And then Meticello takes care of merging all that together and getting that, getting that linked or yeah. getting that loaded. I was just wondering because I thought it, it's yeah. loaded by default. Yeah. And then yeah. I well, the, the, the interesting thing here is not everybody has this problem, okay? You know, this includes problem. But it's worth mentioning that there are solutions. So I can yeah, maybe can just answer yeah, from the seaside context answer. there. <laughs> um, I mean, basically what we do is we have, so we, we have seaside core, which depends on Greece core, and then seaside Faro core, has to end up depending on Greece Faro core, if you know what I mean. So any any time you have a platform specific package, it needs to depend on the platform specific version of whatever its uh, platform generic one depends on, which is a little unfortunate, and we have to kind of do that manually at the moment. Okay, 
may maybe I'm misleading because I, I noticed from other package system that I would expect that the Crease gemstone core would offer the simple gemstone uh, Crease core, but uh, you have then uh, umbrella packages. You have depends and provides, and then mm -hmm. you, you easily can solve this by having the platform sp uh, specific thing providing the common symbol. So you depend on the comments. Huh? Oh, yeah, we have a solution for this problem. It's a different name, but we have a solution, you know. Yeah. 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 One simple question. Uh, baseline is required or not? Is it, it enough works. that you have only specification method, or you need always baseline method to do? If, oh, okay, yes. The uh, sli splitting a version into a version and baseline is a, a convention. Okay. So every every it is needed. You can you can have well you need to specify if there are order dependencies you need to specify the order dependencies. We we recommend that you use baseline version so that because as as Mariano mentioned the baseline the structure of the project tends to be stable, and version numbers of files tends to change quickly. So in order to make it easier to read a version file that's got version numbers in it. We want to put those in a separate file, and they change. You know, one one zero and one one. The only difference is one package version, whereas the structure stayed the same. So readability and everything else is why you do that. However, the next thing is is if the structure changes, you create a new baseline version with the new structure, and with the imports, you can link back through, but it gets to be a, you know, you don't. I think two two links is all you want to ma manage there. Yeah, because this is why if you check the ex already existing uh, configurations, you will see that there are several versions that match to the same baseline. And that's the idea. You create versions and you only change the baseline when some structural information changes. And you have in baseline uh, those uh, prerequisite requirements, not in the version right, method. Right, yes. right. Never in version method. Right. Yes. In Just the version, the only thing you should be that you should put is versions. Version of packages or project, but so not you just structural specify, information. Uh, specify more exactly which version. Exactly. Is version method. Yes, because while uh, requirements and prerequisites are always in baseline. Baseline. Yes. And that's a convention, okay? And Meticello will work fine if you don't follow that convention. If you follow the spec, if you do the specification. Uh, Igor, and we yeah. continue. So about uh, dependencies, uh, uh, you say that you have the solution, but oh. Oh. maybe oh. it's Excellent. not yeah. reflected in this spec, but I my guess is that uh, I could uh, write something like spec named Greece, and then uh, uh, it requires Greece core, and then requires uh, one of the platform specific packages, and then uh, in spec which use Greece, I just use uh, require Greece. Yeah, the, yeah the, the thing is that quickly, if there are, you know, uh, Seaside 3.0, take a look at Seaside 3.0 someday, the configuration. There are like maybe 20 packages that have this kind of include structure and many more packages that require the common package. So that was the first, that was the first thing I did, all right? And that didn't, that, that didn't scale, all right? There's a simpler, a simpler mechanism, and I'll, I'll just show that. Um, yeah, yeah. This is the new one? Okay. All right, so what I was going to do was show a do-it that showed that in uh, baseline th 03, okay, the order of the packages is wrong. You can trust me. We'll, we'll just not do it. Yeah. You can trust me. The packages were wrong. They came in the wrong order. And the simple, uh, let's see, is this a, oh, okay. Pardon? No, I'm going to skip the workspace. We're running out of time. Okay, so basically, do I have a mouse? Yes. What I decided to do was inside the um, the Faro specification. All right, we have a link from Faro core requires core. All right, and what will happen is inside Faro, because I've done this this back link A and B, I know when I did Faro core that I needed to essentially bind those two together. And I'm thinking I wanted to change the name of this, but the method I used is includes. So now I say gemstone core or uh, Faro. Uh, Grease core includes ferro core. So now we've got a bidirectional link. And that actually pulls the two packages together. And the semantics for includes is that any package that, re that requires grease core, the included packages will be loaded before them. 
all right? And so it basically just collapses them, binds them together, all right? And uh, so that, 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 that is, I think, the moral equivalent of the depend, depends and provides without the, the intermediating uh, stuff, so. Anyway, so that, that, that was basically it, and we, we wanted to cover this because the problem is, is you're, if you're doing development and you come in and are developing a configuration and you go, I have a problem, the load order isn't right, there are solutions out there, and the truth is, get on the, ma the, the mailing list and, you know, there'll be a new feature the next week, or if it's bad enough, problem. <laughs> uh, okay, if you understand that, uh, I promise you that you will understand the rest of the presentation. Because that was one of the most complicated features. So now we have already done different versions, but how to load them? Because if we run all of them, the idea is that someone will load that versions, and that's the final. That is what Metachelo is for. So to facilitate that users to load a project. So how could be the download of that project with Metachelo? It would be like use as configuration of grid is to you ask the project to that class and then to you ask okay give me the version for example 0 0.1 and to the version to the result of it you said load and then with load it will check all the packages that it need it checks the order that the package will have to be loaded it load finally the the package that you said so this is the navis the simplest way that someone has to load a package, a project with uh, Metacello. So I will go further because we are getting out of time. So we have uh, our last baseline that has some new new features. Um, it's all the same that we change. For example, we add what is called groups, Metacello groups, and this is that you can define groups of an of anything, al almost anything. I mean, a group can be compo composed by, for example, another group. So I said, okay, the default group is core, and then I define the group core, and I said that it has an array with this core only. For the moment, I can say that the core group only has the package this core. And then I, 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 w I can define the group test, where I put the test. And the idea behind the groups is that not all the people want to load the same packages. Maybe someone is interested in just the core, the kernel of a project, and he, he doesn't care about the test, for example. Or maybe I need a, a, a core of a project, I, I don't need the why, because maybe I run in headless, so I don't care if it has an integration with only browser, for example. So the idea is to define group of of packages that are useful for different uh, scenarios so that people can download them what they want. So in this case, take a look. We are under the common uh, situation. So for the common, we only create these three groups. And if you see, for example, for Faro, we have these two packages that we have already explained, but also we add for example, some other things. For example, in, in Faro, the core includes also Grease Slime. And this is another package from Grease that it's an integration with the lint rules that they are not supporting it in all the dialects. That's why I cannot put it under the for common do. So I just, I extend the groups, I define it in common with the thing specific for Faro. So coming back with to the Faro, to the for Faro, we have a couple of new things. For example, here I define that now the package risk core requires a post load do it, which means it's something that will be executed after this package is loaded. So sometimes you you sometimes putting things in the class side initialize method is not enough or it's dirty, or sometimes you don't want it to execute. So sometimes you don't load from Monticello and it starts to run everything with the initialize, and we don't want that. Um, so Metacello provides a way to specify post and pre-load do it, where you can put, uh, uh, you can pass a selector with the, and so you have to implement this method in the image in this class. For example, 
if you see here, we only open a workbook saying, okay, this is a project, blah, blah, blah. But here you can do whatever y y you want and you need after the project is loaded. For example, if you load Omni Browser, you may want to set it as a default browser, for example. So this is a good place to put that. I mean, all the things that you have to do by hand after downloading a project can be done with this way. And the same with the pre with the pre load it. Uh, it can be at, at package level, but also it can be a project level. And okay, before starting to load this project, do this. Or after download completely this project, do that. So it's at project level, but also it can be at package level, like in this example. So I, I talk about this, and we have a few more things. Okay, I will go fast and we will finish. The last thing is are the project references. I mean, you a, a project may have dependencies between packages that depend on other packages, but sometimes you depend on another project, not in your own project. For example, in this case, we have Greece, and Greece has a package, as I told you, Slime, and Slime depends on refactoring browser. And Scroll down one thing, they can see the, the dependency. Scroll down one. Ah, I'm sorry. Okay. So it depends on the refactoring browser. So if you check, I'm using project instead of the package name. So when I'm saying a project, I'm saying that I depend on another person that already has a configuration, and I, I will use that. So I, I have to say the class of that confi of the configuration of that project. I need to say what I want to load. The file, this is the Monticello file where you have that class, because Metacello needs to download that package. And finally, the repository. With all this information, Metacello is able to download the package, take the class, and load what you said in the load here. Kay? And with this, I can, uh, if, you, if I want, I can here download directly the refactoring browser packages. But I don't know how the dependencies they have. I don't know if they require things. So with the configuration, we, we assure that refactoring browser will be loaded correctly. And finally, I can use th that project also for the groups. I mean, I can put refactoring now if, for example, Grease Slime depends on refactoring core and Grease core. So the only thing that you have to be done is to set it from the version, because now in the version, you didn't specify any version for the refactoring browser. So the only thing that you should, you, you, you should do is to, to take the version and say, OK, for this package, and spec, uh, project, uh, and the same, and put the, the version that you want. The difference here is that suppose refactoring browser with, and here you don't, you are not referring to a specific package. You are referring to a project. So here you can say one dot one dot two, for example. And this will download the one dot two Metacello version of refactoring browser. And you, you don't need to deal with which packages do you need uh, from refactoring browser. Your refactoring browser needs a, a, a AST, etc. So you, you don't need to handle that because configuration of refactoring browser handle that. And we finish with the tutorial. You want to do the? Just flip through the slides. The three slides and? Oh, this, this is real fast. We've got a current version. There's a bunch of bunch of repository or a bunch of configurations you can find out on Metacello repository. There's about a, a hundred of them out there today. Um, Metacello is still evolving. We're in beta. Um, next slide. <laughs> we plan on having uh, the release by by the end of the year, a 1.0 release. The main things that go in there besides bug fixes is the version naming scheme. You probably saw kind of funky looking version names. We're going to improve that validation. I mentioned that earlier. Um, and ongoing bug fixes and uh, feedback is welcomed. One more? Yeah. Okay. So the places to go, there's a Google code project for Metacello. Um, there's a mailing list, and I encourage you to go there and ask questions. Uh, when Feral by Example 2, Chapter 2, oh, cha the chapter on Metacello is ready, um, it'll be available. And there are tests out there. There's a couple hundred tests you can look at for examples. And really, look at the configurations. That's where the examples are. So, question. Oh, got a question slide. Oh, question. 
I'm afraid we skipped the question if nobody is getting angry because everybody gets has to get ready to get on the bus at four. And Julian we don't like to talk, so don't come and talk to us later. To <laughs> say something. Uh, since we're over time, I think I don't want to rush the seaside discussion, so we'll do it tomorrow at lunch, similar time to um, uh, to the Faro one. So maybe 12:45 or something tomorrow. We'll do do the seaside buff then. Okay. Thank you, Dale. Thank you, Mariano. Yeah, two small announcements before you leave. Uh, so we are, we are going to leave at four. And there will be uh, lockers there so that you can bring your bags with you and uh, lock your, your things in the museum. And to go back, there will be the same two coaches. One will go downtown so that if you have your, your hotel downtown, then you can take this one. And the other uh, coach will go back to the, um, to the Ibis Hotel and here. So if you have uh, your hotel next to, uh, to the City Lab, then you can take this coach. Okay, thank you very much. Sorry? Uh, I guess it will be uh, around 11 p.m. Something around.